It's time for Elevation. Welcome to All Elite Wrestling, where we elevate the careers and elevate you with the biggest man in AEW, Paul White. And my name is Tony Schiavone as we go to Justin Roberts in the ring. This contest is set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Approaching the ring from Newport, Rhode Island, weighing 195 pounds, David Ali. Paul, great to be working with you once again this week, and we're looking forward to some great matches here. David Ali, he's 0 5 in AEW, but he has had a very successful career in the independents, and he's got the attitude to boot. And his opponent from Atlanta, Georgia, weighing 180 pounds, Big Shotty. Lee Johnson. I love this guy, Big Lee Shotty Johnson. I just love his attitude. You know, he's got such a good charisma about him when you talk to this young man backstage. He's got such a bright future. So it could be to a better person as well. Like, I feel like I'm endorsing him to run for Congress. <laughs> well, I just, I spent some time talking to him, and I'm really, really interested to see this young man grow. Uh, he has grown, he has worked in the Nightmare Factory. Let me uh, let me also uh, tell you that he has worked in the Nightmare Factory, not the factory. Right. And uh, he is a member of the Nightmare family. He knows David Ali very, very well. He's a hard hitter and Paul, he's a great athlete. And that really, that really says a lot. When you, just, sometimes you just say he can do this, he can do that. But a great athlete can just about do anything. Well, and the good thing about it too is I was trying to get to earlier, but you know, I, I used too many words. The great athlete that Big Shotty Lee Johnson is, he also comes up with a great humbleness and a good attitude. Yeah. Which that will take you far. Nothing wrong with that. Nice headlock scissors here. Yeah. Again, Ali trying to get out of it. These guys feeling each other. Like they've battled before, so these guys kind of kind of know each other. So testing each other here. No one wants to make the first mistake. Such a chess game, I don't think people understand on the outside when you're in this ring. A lot of it is feeling the other opponent's leverage, where his aggression is. Uh, if you can get in his head, make him make a mistake. Right now, Big Lachati Lee just controlling that head, working him into a corner. It's all about controlling tempo. Nice clean break. I like that. Respectful. Yeah. Ah, see? I told that? you. Wow. He's a good kid, man. I'm telling you. I think he just got uh, David Ali upset. David Ali is a talented kid. He's a. Uh, He's a very fast athlete, was a 100-meter dash champion on his high school team. Oh, so was I. Wow, now that I'd like to see, man. So would have I. That's a bold-faced <laughs> lie. <laughs> okay. The only time I dash is when I see that hot donut light on. Okay. This is his debut on Elevation, David Ali. And, buddy, he's obviously brought the attitude here with him. Shotty wants to, there you go. Wow, arm whipped him down. Oh, boy, and that one found its mark. Right between the shoulder blades. Yeah, exactly. David Ali calls himself the savior, if you will. Yeah. He thinks he's the martyr for up and coming wrestlers who are desperate to be seen. And he's getting his chance here. Boy, Shotty nailed him with a perfect drop kick. Yeah. yeah, Big Shotty's somebody that you're gonna have to stay on. You can't really take the gas off of Shotty Lee. You know, he's got the experience. He's got that good influence from, you know, the Nightmare Factory. He knows how to turn it up, get the job done. So Big Ali, we'll see if he's going to be a savior or not. I thought to be a martyr, you have to, you know. Yeah, I, I thought to, so too. Yeah, I don't, I don't, okay. know, I don't know. Maybe don't, I can help him with that. A couple of standing, talk to him. <laughs> a couple of standing switches. One thing about Shotty Lee, he's a great striker too. Great right hand, yeah. high impact striker. And that's a natural strike he has too. Sometimes you can coach that and work on it, but right. some people are just gifted right there. Yep. That straight right, right in the chin, just zipped it right in. That's a great natural punch. Wow, David Ali met him on the way down that time. Great counter move by Ali. One, two, and he almost got a win. Did David Ali would have been his first in AEW? He sure did. He was smart enough to know that he caught Big Shotty with that shot right to the chin and then get that quick cover and hook a leg. Great job by Ali. Well, Ali obviously with those kicks knows what the hell he's doing, man. Look at this. Back and forth they go. You know, the key, Paul, you know this as well, not only to strike somebody, but where where to hit him, where to strike him, where to hit him. What's going to do the most impact? You know, and usually that's to strike mobility 
or to strike somewhere in the wind. Double underhook. Nice. Well done. Well done. And David Ali pops back up with a flying European uppercut. How about yeah. that on target? You see that kip up he did? He made that look easy, didn't he? He sure did. That He's shows got him that up. Explosive athleticism. Wow. Nice. One, two. Wow, and he got out of it. Wow, he's really making a statement here. Big power move shows that explosiveness. If you're going to be a 100-yard sprinter, sprinter, you have to be explosive. Don't worry, my mouth will start working real soon. I, I know it will, man. Uh, right hand, side of the head. Ali hitting with his bomb that time, which he thought would win wow. the match. That was a shot. Great match to start elevation here this week. Fantastic competition. I like Look at those lariats, nice and high across the upper chest, right under the chin, and the recovery. Well done. The cutter, and he up, boy, you talk, we are seeing two <laughs> phenomenal athletes to begin this program. He really had to show off, because he knows he didn't use any hands on that kip up. Right. That was all legs and core show off. I love it. <laughs> Dragging the arm that time, getting in a couple of cuts, and now to the backslide. One, two, no, Sarah got out of it. Good idea. Good uh, idea. Ali Ducks using the springboard, and he goes right to the foot from Big Shotty Lee, who's got him up. Hooks the leg. There it is. Whoa. Blue Thunder Bomb. Blue Thunder Bomb over. Good job, Big Shotty. That was a great contest between these two. Here is your winner, Big Shotty Lee Johnson. After starting his career 0-29, he is now 5-1 here in 2021. Here it is again, Paul. That back of the knee, right on the back of the skull, the lower neck, just gives you that little equilibrium dizzy. You don't know where you are, can't think enough to kick out. Big Shotty pulls out the victory, nice and clean. Big Shotty Lee now 5-1 in 2021. It's always great being here with G, and it's always great being here with you on Elevation. Dr. Britt Baker, DMD, is going to be in action here this week on Elevation. She's got a big match coming up. Oh, does she ever have a big match? She's going to get her shot at Sheeta for the AEW Women's Championship. That's going to be coming up on May 30th, of course, at Double or Nothing. Also, Eddie Kingston's coming up next. And John Moxley, who will defend the IWGP U.S. Championship this coming Wednesday against Yuji Nagata, will be on the program this week. And, Tony, that's the first time that IWGP U.S. title is defended on AEW. And we're looking forward to that coming up on TNT on Wednesday. But right now, let's go back to Justin Roberts. This bout is for one fall with a 20-minute time limit. Making his way to the ring from Yonkers, New York, weighing 244 pounds, Eddie Kingston. There he is, Tony. Eddie Kingston, 19 years experience. His opponent from Massapequa, New York, weighing 191 pounds, VSK. VSK is a hell of a competitor, guys. And it's going to be a good match. You know, Eddie Kingston, he talked about his experience, so much on his mind. Obviously, you look at revenge, you look at the map, trying to get back at people. What's on their mind right now? The Young Bucks, the World Tag Team Champions. They're the World Tag Team Champions right now, but the Young Bucks on Wednesday, Paul, have SCU defending the titles. But I don't think that Kingston and John Moxley care as much about getting the titles as they do Getting revenge. Getting revenge. Getting on. Yeah, just, I would just love to see a right cross right in the nose of Nick Jackson. Just wow. that's right in the nose of Nick specific. Jackson. That's Yeah. That's a specific person. That's a specific part of the body yeah. right in the freaking nose. Nick Jackson needs a shot in the nose. Duly he does. Noted. Yeah. I'll put that in the record. Yeah. Oh. And a knee lift. Yeah. I love what Eddie Kingston does there. He really uses momentum to his advantage. You know, you think you're gonna get shot off into the ropes, and then you should get shot off into an upper knee. Out of one count that I mean, he is relentless. He really is. Oh, he's aggressive. He kind of yeah. reminds me like a bulldog. Once he sinks his teeth in, yeah. you know, he doesn't let go. Yeah. He's really, that's, that's how he approaches his life. Eddie Kingston does. Oh, he's all or nothing. That's, That's right. right. If he's your friend, he's your friend. Right. If he's not your friend, you know that too. You stay away from him. Absolutely. Exactly. 
great fighter, great to heart, great determination, and obviously, as we have found out, he is obviously able to come back from a beating. Well, you don't last 19 years in this business without being able to control your pain tolerance. The determination, anger, will, drive, motivation, whatever it is, those are some of the things you have to conquer to, to even stay in this business, to let alone be successful like Eddie Kingston. Kingston with a running start. VSK with his quickness moved out of the way, and he runs in with a big European uppercut. He'll take the other turnbuckle now and come in with a big pump kick with authority that time. VSK has got a great amateur background. Now you can tell by his conditioning yeah. he's got that amateur background and that athleticism. He just rung Eddie Kingston right in the air with that one. Yeah, step up that time, picks him up. Wow, I thought that was wow, that that was, was pretty impressive. I thought it was gonna be a Death Valley driver, but it was right across the knee that time. Richard BSK showing that amateur wrestling background to have that power to snatch somebody up. That's a lot of core strength, stabilizing muscles. Eddie's got the size and height advantage. VSK used it to his advantage. Cover, got a one count. VSK is wrestling his 14th match here in AEW. Still looking for his first win this year. Oh, and a big uppercut again staggers Eddie. But again, you just have to, Eddie is so tough and so rigid and so firm. You just, it's like you can't, Look at this, you can't knock him to the ground just by strikes. He's just gnarly, you know? Yeah. Eddie Kingston reminds me of that guy that like owns that really rough bar in a part of town. Yeah. Where only the tough guys go, and he's the one that throws out the tough guy. Sure. Owner, bouncer, all in one, right? Owner, bouncer, all in one. Absolutely. Trying he, to get those elbows to the back of the ear. Good oh, try. He tried his move, which is the back fist to the future, and he missed that time. Oh, my, the backstabber. Perfectly executed. Well done, VSK. Yeah. Better get hustling. Don't leave him too long. No, you're right. Taking his time getting up. He had a little indecision about where to go, what turnbuckle. He's got Kingston down. VSK could be his moment. He tried a big splash and missed. That's always such a risky, risky move. Eddie rolls him over. One, two, three. Smart move on Eddie Kingston's part. Now, what are the Eddie Kingston. I think sometimes these younger athletes, they try to make that big, impressive win, yep. but they forget the golden rule of being in pro wrestling. Get the W, get the pinfall. Eddie Kingston took advantage right here. He knew the VSK laid it all out on that big splash, rolled him up. Eddie didn't even have to get back up on his feet to get that one done. So Eddie Kingston continues to win, but for him, the Young Bucks on his mind. Look at that gnarly dog. All right, tag team action up next on AEW Elevation. Fuego Del Sol and Baron Black versus Ethan Page and Scorpio Sky. Reach from the sky. This is the tag team contest set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Approaching the ring at a combined weight of 433 pounds, all ego, Ethan Page, and the face of the revolution, Scorpio Sky. There they are, Tony. Yes, sir. The two guys who have taken the team of Sting and Darby Allen, as the old cliche goes, put them in their crosshairs and have done a hell of a job at dismantling them in they a short span. Yeah, they definitely fired the opening salvo, it would seem, and uh, they're doing pretty well with it. Sting, he's in a lot of trouble from that vicious heel lock by Scorpio Sky. Been chunking Darby Allen down the stairs. That's there. Their opponents are combined with 375 pounds, Baron Black and Fuego Del Sol. Glad to see Fuego Del Sol. I'm really happy to see Baron Black back in competition, you know. He took a vicious powerbomb by Nick Camarado a few weeks ago. Yeah. I'm glad to see this young man back in competition, healthy, doing well, and I wish him all the best tonight. All right, should be a good tag team match. We got uh, four very, very, well, four top flight athletes really here. Yeah, we got Alabama's number one luchador. How about that? I, and I'm sure he's the only one that can claim that. Absolutely. Yes. I don't. Well, maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you never know. There might be a huge luchador underground community in Alabama, in Alabama. That we don't know about. There, there's a lot of independent wrestling around the world. We know that. We acknowledge it. We we draw from it. We 
We put them here, and who knows, there could be another one. I mean, heck, there was even one giant in the land of lily pigeons. So, you know? Yeah. Could happen. I get that. Right now, Sky against Baron Black here going one on one. Just the disdain that Scorpio Sky has for any one of his opponents is in the ring now. You know, you just see it on his face and his general attitude. Shoulder block takedown. Sky just staring a hole in Baron Black. Black drops down. Baron showing a lot of quickness here. Picks him up. Wow. Reverse right. atomic drop. Wow. Spinning chop to the chest. Nice job, Baron Black. Man, listen to the trash talking from Ethan Page. That, that's part of their game. I, I mean, they, they, especially Ethan Page, they love to oh, talk a big game, got the foot up. Great diversionary tactic that time, wasn't it? Wow, just ran right over him. That's, that's a great tag team work right there. Ethan Page ran his mouth, got the attention, took the swipe, got Baron Black distracted, Scorpio Sky hit him like a freight train. That's what good tag teams do, they work fluidly together. Both are in sync, and both of these guys, all you go Ethan Page and Scorpio Sky are definitely in sync right now. Baron Black's trapped deep in enemy territory. Sky and Page have been undefeated as a team in a short span here in AEW. Many of those wins, I would dare say most of those wins have come here on elevation. Yeah, but they definitely know they're on top right now. Sure they right? do. They're, they're feeling it. You know, they always say it when an athlete's in the zone, they're feeling it. I'll go Ethan Page and Scorpio Sky are feeling what they're doing. Just the menace and the disdain for everyone around them. I think I can say this now. Scorpio Sky, a quote unquote former member of SCU. He's more in tune here with Ethan Page. And of course, Christopher Daniels, Frankie Gazarian put their careers on the line as a team against the Young Bucks coming up Wednesday night on Dynamite live on TNT. A match with so many implications. Four former friends, world title on the line, and the future of SCU on the line as well. That's a pretty bold statement when you put your career on the line. It really is. He slipped from behind that time, and good waist lock rollover. One, two, thought he had him down. He had those legs. And here comes Fuego Del Sol. Kid's pretty quick, isn't he? Oh, he's quick. He's the master of the Tornado DDT. Yeah, you pick up a sky, lands on his feet. Great balance, ducks low, hits the top turnbuckle with a moonsault and takes them both down. Alabama's number one luchador. Take it, take it home, kid. Let's go. Here we go. Under we see it. There it comes. Oh, was going for the tornado DDT. So close. Wow. And he got Ethan. shoved away by Ethan Page. Ethan Page just flattened him. And meanwhile, Scorpio Sky takes care of Baron Black on the outside. Meanwhile, here's the Ego's Edge. Oh, boy. How about the hang time on that? One, two, three, it's over. Reach for the sky. Oh, what is this match? The team of all ego, Ethan Page, and the face of the revolution, Scorpio Sky. You know, that took my breath away a little bit when I saw the height that Fuego Del Sol was up in the air. It kind of stunned me a little bit because all ego, Ethan Page, launched Fuego Del Sol. I mean, he's got to be nine or 10 feet in the air on this. Absolutely, look at this. Up and down. That's a huge heavy bump. Sixth win without a loss. And I'm sure Sting and Darby Allen still have plenty to say to this duo. Winners here on Elevation. Let's go to this week's AEW Showcase. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. I'm here with Danny Limelight, also known as the Radioactive Poppy. Hey, gente, how you doing? I'm doing good, my friend. <laughs> doing I'm doing good. good. One of the questions I want to ask you is, uh, when did you become interested in professional wrestling? I started becoming a fan of professional wrestling in 1997. I was watching a show, fell in love with the storytelling, you know, the, the, the Shakespeare, the art of it all, the excitement, the adrenaline. It wasn't until 2014 I actually started training to become a professional wrestler. You and I actually did meet before you got into your professional wrestling yeah. career. We met at Camp Pendleton. At what point in your life did you decide that you wanted to serve your country? Growing up in New York, I was a street rat kid. I was in a lot of trouble. You know, I was making the wrong decisions, following the wrong path, you know, allowing myself to be influenced by the negative in my neighborhood. My senior year, I decided to go take a trip to the recruiting office, randomly with a friend. I never had any intentions of serving, but I remember walking into this office and seeing this Marine Staff Sergeant. He looked at me and he said, get this kid out of my office. He can't be a Marine. Because I walked in there, you know, I had my pants sagging and I looked like a street kid. He said, go across the street to the army and they'll, they'll take a look at you. 
And I remember walking out the Marine Corps recruiting office, walking to the Army office, and seeing this, you know, Army man come out. And just the way that he just was able to like direct me that way, and I just followed, you know, the orders and stuff. I was like, nah. I was like, I want to be there. You know, I, I want, I want to prove this man wrong. You know, I want to go be a Marine. So I turned right back around and I walked into the recruiting office and I said, Sir, I'm gonna be a Marine. Do you want to sign me up or not? He asked me how old I was. I was 17 at the time, so I had to go home, tell my mom and my dad. I want to be a Marine. They came the next day and they signed the papers and they shipped me right out right after high school. So mom and dad were real proud of you for making that choice. Yes. When I was a kid, they used to make a joke all the time. They used to say, you know, back in the day, the TV shows used to have the drill sergeants come in and screaming at the kids that were bad. And my mom and dad would always joke and say, I'm going to send you over there if you don't, you know, get your act together. And I was like, well, joke's on you, mom. I'm going on my own now. So. Right. And you actually became one of those I became, drill instructors. I did. In full circle, I ended up, you know, I became a sergeant in the Marine Corps. I fell into the top 10% and I went to go become a drill instructor. And wow. I made over 350 Marines. Made over 350 Marines. Oh, wow, man, that's yeah. crazy. Thank was, you, was, thank you very much for your service. That's impressive. Thank you, sir. It was, a, it was an incredible journey. And it made me see straight, you know, it set the example of what a man should be. Danny, tell me, your experiences in the military, in the Marine Corps, how did that influence your training to become a professional wrestler? Did that discipline help you to succeed? Uh, 100%, you know, becoming a professional wrestler, as you know, is no easy task. Not any old person could just walk into a you know, wrestling ring and do the stuff that we do week in and week out. I started training to be a professional wrestler in 2020. 14. I was still in the Marine Corps, so I was trying to multitask and manage my time properly to be able to do my job as a Marine and then go home, see my daughter, and go straight to the ring to train. I think it was a little bit easier for me in the sense that the Marine Corps had me in the best shape I was ever in. Obviously, taking that first bump sucked, you know, hitting the <laughs> ropes. I, re I remember, like, going home and I had bruises on my back from hitting the ropes and stuff like that. And oh, you had that little virgin back that <laughs> <and you got laughs> purple? Oh. I had that, I had that. I think that the hardest part about becoming a professional wrestler is staying consistent and having the, the drive to go and continue to push through, even when, you know, you're making those long drives, you're not seeing your family, you're missing the holidays. The Marine Corps kind of prepared me for that, you know. I, I didn't go home for months, years, if that, because of training and, and workups coming up for deployments and things of that nature. The sacrifices that I had to make on the road to become a professional wrestler, I was already accustomed to because right. the Marine Corps essentially taught me how to be on my own and how to, how to make those sacrifices. When I exited the Marine Corps in 2019, I was a staff sergeant. I had, you know, a pretty good life set up for me in the Marine Corps, 10 more years to retirement, but I knew that deep down inside that my passion was to be a professional wrestler. And so I, I, I bet on myself, I made the decision to exit stage left and, and go full force straight into professional wrestling. Well, believe me, a lot of the fans and myself too are very happy that you made that choice. Now, Danny, the pandemic affected everyone's life. But in your case, it opened some pretty big doors. Tell us about that journey and tell us what's next for Danny Limelight. I got out of the Marine Corps in October of 2019, went full force into the wrestling and the stunt community. The first thing I did was I did a film with John Hennigan. And so I did all the stunts in his film. And then he, you know, introduced me to some people that gave me an opportunity to have a tryout with New Japan. I did the tryout with New Japan Pro Wrestling. It went really well. They told me they were gonna let me know when something came up and then the pandemic hit. And as a single father to a beautiful little girl, I didn't have the money coming in from the military anymore. And now wrestling was on a pause, at least on the independent scene. And I didn't know what was gonna happen. Then, you know, in October, I was blessed to get the call from AEW to come out. And fortunately, I was able to, to make a name or, or make enough of a statement that they would wanna see me come back. It's, it's crazy when you look back at where I was a year ago and where I'm at now, you know, we're, we're to the date, you know, almost a year since the pandemic started. And I'm wrestling on national television every week and it feels, it feels great, you know, it's a blessing. My daughter's proud. You know, you ask me what's next for Danny Lyman. What's next for the radioactive father? <laughs> I just want to be the hardest worker in the room. I want to be a workhorse. I want to be one of the most innovative creative talents that people have ever seen. All right. I want people to look back five, ten years from now and, and, and when they're trying to come up in the business, they were looking at my stuff, seeing the stuff that I did so they can innovate themselves and they can make a name for themselves. I want to inspire people that were in the military that after you get out of the military, you know, there's still, there's a future. You can do other things. There's doors that will open for you. I want to inspire my daughter. I want to set the example for her. I want her to look at me and say, I can follow my dreams because my dad served this country and then went out and went after what he wanted and got it. That's what I want to do. That's what's next for me, papi. Wow, that, my man, you know what? You definitely have a future of motivational speaking at least. At least. <laughs> Thank you. But we're definitely looking forward to more of your career and seeing you grow and be one of those big stars. Thank you very Thank you much so for much. the time. You bet. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. I'm Paul White, and this is the Radioactive Poppy. Mi gente! Thank you so much, Paul. There she is. From the graveyards of Tijuana, Thunder Rosa. 
This contest is scheduled for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Entering the ring from the graveyards of Tijuana, Mexico, Thunder Rosa. And her opponent from Washington, D.C., Renee Michelle. There's Renee Michelle looking for her first win here at AEW. Four time women's champion for Maryland Championship Wrestling. Trained under Sean Spears, also trained with the marvelous promotion in Japan. She's got a great background, and buddy, she's going after the number two ranked contender in the AEW women's division right here at Thunder Rosa. Thunder Rosa is just such an all around amazing competitor. Such experience, world experience, wrestled all over the world. You know, and just her technical experience and background really comes into play. I love watching her wrestle here on Elevation. Put her in a half crab already. Just muscled over is what she did. Turns, put some extra leverage on that ankle. That's actually down. on the knee joint too, Tony. Sure. Whether she's got that, that's a cover there. Where she had that ankle pinned against the ribs and forcing the back of the leg against the thigh, that was like a knee lock almost. That's a quick way to rip a knee joint out. Absolutely, uh, Rosa got her hooked. And into a hammerlock goes Renee Michelle. Well, as we know, Dr. Britt Baker, DMD, who's coming up later on this program, has the title shot coming up at Double or Nothing on May 30th on pay-per-view. But you can't count out Thunder Rosa, who's the number two ranked contender. She's going to get a shot down the line, that AEW women's title. Oh, definitely. This women's division is so competitive. Look at this bridge by Renee Michelle. Nicely done twice. Thunder Rosa comes right out of it. Trying to hammerlock of her own, trying to get it in. Look at that. Puts the knee into the midsection to flip her over. Exactly. Yeah, that's using leverage to her advantage. Use that knee as a fulcrum. Shift that body weight and over goes Renee Michelle. Right now, Thunder's doing a great job of controlling that arm. Got that nice lock in, controlling the tempo. Full arm drag, twist into the ropes now. Sending Michelle in. Nice arm drag. Arm drags her down, does it once again. Deep arm drag on that one. And then comes away with a drop kick to put Renee Michelle back down to the mat. She put that foot right in the kisser. Here's the cover, hooks the far leg, one, two. Thunder Rosa held the NWA women's title for 277 days before losing it to Serena Deeb. And Moss, one more. Yeah, as you can tell, she's a hell of a striker, too. Sends Michelle to the far side. Renee ducks in, tried to snap mare, not it. But I thought it was a snap mare, but it was a cravat into a face buster. Yeah, into a face buster. How about that call. one? One count. I was going to say face into the knee, but face buster sounds much more professional. <laughs> You've been doing this a while, haven't you, sir? Yeah, sometimes you just got to go with it. Call what you see. Nose first, and Renee Michelle. Oh, wow. Took a little bit too much time going back to the attack again. Thunder Rose is so smart. Get yeah. that shot right to the bread basket. Yeah. There's an the elbow to the top of the head, that boot to the face. Hit her on the way up, kick her on the way down, right? Yeah, I think Thunder Rosa still his bell is still a little ringing from that face buster. I believe so. Cravat face buster. Cravat face buster. It's European uppercut. Thunder Rosa. Since her arrival here in AEW looking for a 15th win. Nicely done by Renee Michelle. Lured her into the corner and got her with a kick. Showing that flexibility. Absolutely. Ducking low and a pickup. Renee Michelle trying to send her over. But Rosa's got her hooked up, picks her up, oh! And drives her down. One, two. I think a lot of women are surprised when they compete against Thunder Rosa. They look at her, she might be a little bit smaller in stature. They don't realize how strong Thunder yeah. Rosa oh, is. Oh, gosh, absolutely. Look at the face, man. Determination of that face right now. Uh, Thunder Rosa, number two ranked contender in the AW Women's Division. Nice running lariat in the corner. Aubrey Edwards says out of the corner, but Thunder Rosa is not done. Renee Michelle having trouble getting to her feet here. Thunder Rosa, three point stance for her, and a leaping drop kick that time. She's got her hook, picks her up over the top, double underhook suplex. 
Covers are one, two, no Sarah, and Renee Michelle still is in this match. Right now, Renee Michelle needs to find a way to change the momentum of this match. Right now, Thunder Rose is kind of imposing her will. Slip behind, waist lock. Rolls her over, good pinning combination, one, two. Picks her up, look at the strength. Into a German bridge, suplex, one, two, and a two count. Wow. Very impressive, Renee Michelle. Absolutely. Showing some strength, some athletic ability, some flexibility. And here's that fight in Thunder Rosa coming out. Great running high boot inside the head. What's Thunder Rosa doing here? Uh, a pinning combination, she quickly taps out of it. A that submission hold. This match. Thunder Rosa. Never seen that from her. Seen her fire thunder driver, sit down pile driver, but this submission hold. Look at this. Kind of like a the head. Oh, the I see what's going on. Yes, she's got the neck pinned. Yeah, that's really painful. Thunder Rosa now 16 and five in AEW and looking for her shot at the world title as well. Let's go to Eddie Kingston standing by. Yeah, I can sit here and tell you about, you know, the match I won and all this good stuff. But see, that's not what's on my mind, you know what I mean? Mox is not here right now, my man's chilling, you know what I'm saying? He got a baby on the way, all that jazz, you know what I mean? How you doing, Renee? But the thing that's really getting underneath my skin is the <laughs> Mox, Mox knows it's the Young Bucks. You see, what bothers me about the Young Bucks is I signed here because of the Young Bucks. Because the Young Bucks were the EVPs because I was around with the Young Bucks on the independents. I suffered with them. Before they were what they are now, the Young Bucks, where everyone hated them, especially when they didn't shake hands. I was there with them. They didn't make the money. We had to share appetizers and samplers so we could feed all of us. But now they're all big and bad and they become EVPs and they want to take on the world revolution and we're changing everything. Yeah, well, guess what, boys? It was harder than you thought, huh? And now you're going to cry about it. Now you're going to sit there, it was hard. I am mad. And now you're going to join up with Kenny in the biggest corny piece of shit I've ever seen in my life. And folks, trust me, I've seen many. Don Callis. Everything he stands for, you guys used to stand against. But now because it gets a little hard for you, you're going to go turn on your word. You guys make me sick. I believed in you guys. And I don't believe in a lot. You're going to come out there, super kick Mox, embarrass me, embarrass Mox, embarrass the fans, embarrass this company. You don't understand about this company. You guys don't get this. I'm not going nowhere else. This is it. This is my last stop. So, me being the way I am, if y'all going to take this company down, if you're going to treat this company like a joke, then you're going to have to rip my heart out. Come on, young bucks. Fight us. Try to rip my heart out. Try it. Now with the, now with the, now with the best friends. This match is set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Approaching the ring from Murray, Kentucky, weighing 217 pounds, he is the Kentucky gentleman, Chuck Taylor. Chuck Mike Taylor, Taylor. yeah. I'm about to say the same thing. Chuck Go Taylor ahead. out there with best friends, yeah. right? Yeah, that's what I was going to say. And one of his best friends is the man you see walking down the steps right there who's got a quite a match coming up on Dynamite. From Juarez, Mexico, weighing 165 pounds, Fare Morales. All right, so just to, just to get this out of the way, my own opinion on this. Right. This past week, during Blood and Guts, interviewing Kenny Omega, Kenny Omega talked about, well, the wrestle Pack, number one contender. No, he's got to wrestle the winner of Pack and Orange Cassidy at Double or Nothing. And then Orange Cassidy comes out, and Kenny laughs it off. 
Why do you laugh off an opponent, especially one that has been so successful like Orange Cassidy? I, I... Fear. Fear? Fear. I mean, when you're in an uncomfortable situation, when you're confronted, what do most people do? They laugh, they chuckle, they're embarrassed, they're caught off guard. And I think as scattered as Kenny Omega is with all the things he has on his plate right now, yep. and let's admit it, Kenny Omega has one full plate, he's a little scattered right now. And then just think, you know, you're in control, he's having a nice interview with Tony Schiavone, and then Orange Cassidy comes out there. I think it shook Kenny Omega a little bit. My it, opinion. It, well, it probably did. It's also a lot of arrogance in there. I mean, he really believes. True. He, he true. really believes he's invincible. He's got four title belts for crying out loud. Yeah, four belts. Yeah. So. Well, I'd hate to take that bag through the airport security. Huh. I always love that. They want to open your bag and they can see clear as day. It's a championship in your bag. Okay. Well. Oh, you just want to hold it up and take a picture. With okay. <laughs> I've never had that problem. And uh, i tell you what, uh, Larry Morales has. He has problems here with Chuck Taylor, who's seven and three, by the way, here in 2021 here in AEW. And really of course- like the heart of Barry Morales, you know? Oh yeah, I do he too, He comes man. out here every time on elevation, just laces his boots up tight, and he comes out here and competes. A lot of respect for that young man. Former MMA fighter, background in kickboxing, Larry Morales, but Chuck Taylor, one of the Great teams in all of AEW, and there you see the best friends watching. Not only is it Taylor and Chuck, but it's Orange Cassidy, it's Chris Statlander, who's made a, a great return to the ring as well. Look at that! Flying head scissors. Flying head scissors take over. That time, Barry Morales up on top. Yeah. Big drive, looks like that shoulder hit the mat really hard with Chuck Taylor there. Yeah, Chuck rolls back in the ring, and that's- it's okay, that's good. Big knee. Big knee. That was a vicious knee right caught Barry Romales. Kentucky gentleman picks him up. The awful waffle. One, two, three. There is your winner, Chuck Taylor. A lot of people have pile drivers that they use. He calls that the awful waffle. It's the sit down spike pile driver. And he put it on lightning quick, and here comes best friends. Are we going to see it? I'm sure we are. Oh, isn't that great? And they love each other. That's awesome. That's just like a greeting card in the making. Well, there it is. It. The awful waffle. I dig it. It's easier to say. You got to give the people what they want. I learned that from Excalibur, by the way. You did? Good man to listen to. Great win for Chuck Taylor on Elevation. Next up in the women's division, legit Layla Hirsch against Danny Jordan one-on-one. -on -one. My pal, love Layla Hurst. She's legit. What a firecracker. Great amateur background. Want to see this girl do big, amazing things. The following contest is scheduled for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Currently in the ring, originally from Moscow, Russia. Legit Layla Hirsch. Her opponent from Long Island, New York. Danny Jordan. Looking forward to this matchup. Really have a lot of respect for both these ladies. Danny, the real mean girl, always has something to say. A lot of it very unkind. She's in great shape. Well, if she calls herself the mean girl, you don't think she's going to have nice things to say? No, I don't. <laughs> but you could throw them out once in a while, couldn't you? Well, I guess, just yeah. to change the game up a little bit. She better watch herself with Layla Hirsch. She is a stalker. Look at her. She's just waiting. She's got those shooter boots on. You know what that means. Yeah, she can I, shoot. I, I do. <laughs> Layla said, okay, okay, you ready? You done cheering there? That's right. Your pom-poms. Let's get in here and wrestle. In only three years in the pro ring, Layla Hirsch is 10-3 and three in AEW. Look at this. She's going to stretch her already. 
Well, you'd see just the way she took her down. Try to get a pinfall there. She's controlling the arm. So you're going up against Layla Hirsch, Paul, and you know she wants to take you down to the mat, right? How do you combat that? I just... Well, you sprawl, keep a wide base. We always talk about that wide athletic base. And you, but see, what Layla Hirsch did right then, she stepped the leg behind and folded the back of the knee. Once she broke the knee, being locked, there's no balance, you're gonna fall. I mean, that's just such a great amateur move that Layla did right there. It's very hard to do that. Best thing to do is try to sprawl, try to keep her from getting in close or getting on you. Maybe try to attack with more of a striking position. Danny Jordan, who's had plenty of wins on the independent circuit, looking for a first win here in AEW. Snapmare takeover, had a steam. Oh, how about that drop kick? Layla Hirsch was down. She drop kicked her as she was in a sitting position. Picks her up for a suplex. Nicely done that time. Covers. One. We only got a boy, Layla Hirsch, out in a hurry on that. Well, Layla Hirsch knows when you're in amateur wrestling, the last thing you want is your shoulders on the mat. It's a place to get out of there quick. Play mean girl went for a kick. Layla ducked it. Wow, keep her off her feet. There you go. Tried to kick her again. Layla caught her. What a great counter move. Yeah, but she stepped in under the leg and grabbed by the hip again. Right. Another chance for a win for Danny Jordan. She gets the two count. You see what Layla's doing here? She does a lot of technical things very well. She ducked under that leg, leg but she grabbed by the hip joint and broke the body down. Those are all points of taking people down. People always talk about kicking somebody in the knee or kicking them somewhere else. You kick them right in the hip, you'll break them down too. Ducked out of the way. Look German. At German. Man, German suplex and De La Hirsch with a head of steam just kicked her head right off. Gonna drag her away from the ropes for a penny combination, but only a two. I thought that was it. I did too, man. That kick. That kick looked like it knocked her fillings out. That kick was legit. Legit. There you go. Well done. Yes, sir. Looking for her seventh win in a row. That includes some tag team wins with Rio Mizunami as her tag team partner. Yeah, Rio brings out the fun side of Layla Hirsch. Yeah. Now just exchanging forearm shots. I'm going to tell you, those forearm shots are connecting both ladies. Got to love that spirit of competitiveness right here. Just, you know what? I'll take your shot and you take mine. We'll see who wins. Bring it. Wow, that was in there. Layla really extended the legs that time to get power behind that. Now just slugging it out. You know, Layla Hurst probably shouldn't have got into that fighting exchange to say what she knows best. Great counter move. Right there it is. The cross arm breaker. It was that quick. And Layla Hurst gets another win. Layla Hurst. Denny Jordan had a good plan. She tried to get Layla in a striking situation. Try to get Layla to forget about that amateur wrestling background. As soon as Layla got her stuff together, she went right to where she needed to stay, and that's in the amateur background. Threw that cross arm breaker on, and that's what she does, and that's why she got the win. Great competition. Another win for legit Layla Hurd here on Elevation as we go back to Dasha Gonzalez with this special interview. Dasha. Congratulations on yet another victory, Scorpio Sky and all ego Ethan Page. Now, gentlemen, you guys keep racking up win after win after win. What can you attribute to this budding chemistry you guys have going on? Please, take it away. I mean, when you're teaming with a man like this, I mean, how can you not have win after win after win? The man's a winner, and so am I, right? I mean, come on, look at this guy. Look at you. I'm a winner. You beefy, sure. bro. You beefy. For sure, for sure, I'm a winner. But like, do you see those attacks today? Oh, you know. You see that? You know. What'd you call it? The lock and sock. Lock and sock. Dude, ah, that yeah. was that was awesome. And then obviously some my epic shoulder tackle. Ooh. I mean. We whooped those dudes' asses Whoa. today on Elevation. That was so good. That ego's edge, bro. Bro got, he got frequent flyer miles before <laughs> he came back down to earth. I'm like, I'm, I can't even talk. I was so amazed. I was like, he's really still up there. <laughs> They're lucky I didn't heel hook him. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, <laughs> like you did the sting. <laughs> you wrong for that. And then he disappeared. <laughs> we haven't seen him since. Limping ain't easy. Because it's all fun and games until somebody gets hurt. Oh, 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 oh you mean like you did Darby. Oh, you yeah. down there from stairs. That is true. He oh, was, you, he, hey, you know what? He's <laughs> for sure hurt, which kind of sucks because he's got that big title match coming up on Wednesday against Miro. Word. If he's even going to make it. But if you do, Darby, good luck.
will be watching. <laughs> My time to This contest is set for one fall with a 20-minute time limit. From Clearwater, Florida, weighing 166 pounds, Matt Seidel. There he is. I know this guy very well, Tony. Matt Seidel, heart, charisma, and pure athleticism. From Utah, weighing 222 pounds, Manny Smith. Got Manny Smith to deal with, who's making his AEW debut. Uh, something here about Scorpio Sky and and Ethan Page. Right. They put the heel lock on Sting, put him out of commission for a bit. They throw Darby Allen down the steps, hurt his elbow. They are really focusing on taking these two men apart. I, I guess they are thinking that that's the way to go. If you want to make a name for yourself as a team, you strike right at the top. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you can't get any higher than striking an athlete like Sting and, you know, Darby Allen, our TNT television champion right now. They're making a statement for themselves as a tag team. But again, don't bite off more than you can chew, guys. Absolutely. Well, they've taken their shots. It is not to disparage them as athletes. They are tremendous, but man. You gotta know what you're getting into. That's right. Side headlock, take over again. Matt Seidel just holding on here. I appreciate what Matt Seidel is doing right here. I mean, Manny Smith, this is his debut. So you're kind of feeling this guy out, keep him grounded. There you go, Manny Smith taking the headlock back over himself. Good looking, athletic physique on him. Matt Seidel countering, using that veteran experience. It's one thing you gotta know, if you can put a hold on, you gotta know how to get out of it too. Manny Smith, who was a fine athlete in Utah, a football star, one, got a one count. He trained, was trained by Ray Lloyd, also known for all of us as Glacier One. Worked with Al Snow, so he's had some great training and great background to move into the pro wrestling ranks. But right now he's got a guy who's, like you said, quick, does a lot of great things, great veteran, just, and it, it seems like that, Wow. And then he kicks her right in the back of the kidneys. <laughs> yeah. it, it, you go. it seems like Matt Seidel can come up with something different each and every match he's in. Yeah, I, I like to describe Matt Seidel's uh, wrestling as very eclectic. He's got, you know, little pieces and little dabbles from all over the place. A little bow and arrow move here. Putting some on that lower back and not only that, wrenching the neck back as well. No worries. Then, then the double stomp to the back just to top it off. Well, you're talking about being able to ground your opponent. Well, that's a master's education right there and how to take someone down and grind them into the mat. Good job, Matt Seidel. There's Smith trying to fight back, but he didn't have much steam behind those punches. Oh, no, no, no. Everything that, that Manny Smith just went through just sucked the wind right out of him. Yeah, he's, you know, he's, he's trying to get his breath back. Maybe he'll be able to put some zip on it. But right now, Matt Seidel's in control. There you go. There you go. Flying Good shoulder. Good job, Manny. Absolutely. Using that weight to advance that football experience. That looked like a big high tackle. Big high tackle. I will say as much, though. Manny Smith has got some cool boots. Yeah, I would agree. I like that different color bottom. That's giving me an idea. I'm going to have to get me a pair of those. It's over now, he says. They hooked him, but oh, step up in Zaguri in the back of the head, and then just wow. whips the back of his head and just with a leg drop or a knee drop on the back of the head. Wow. Very aggressive and, and how quickly Matt Seidel did that. Seidel's got him picked up here. Puts him down. One, two, three with the lightning spiral. Yeah. Here is your winner, Matt Seidel. Another thing too, Matt Seidel was smart enough to know to get back on the shoulders as hard as he could and pull that ankle on this cover. There's a spinning spiral, but watch the cover position that Matt Seidel puts Manny in. Got all of his hips and weights right on those shoulders, cranking that leg down, compressing those lungs, makes it very hard to kick out. Matt Seidel gets another win, his 16th win in singles competition here in All Elite Wrestling. Next up on AEW Women's Competition, Jay Cargill versus Rekka Tahaka. A storm <laughs> is coming.
coming. This next battle is set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Making her way to the ring from Vero Beach, Florida, Jane Cargill. You know, Tony, there are athletes and then there are elite top tier athletes. And there's no doubt about it, when you look at Jade Cargill, you know that that is a top tier elite athlete. So impressive. And buddy, does she know it? Yes, she does. She knows everything you talk about. Let's go back to Justin Roberts, Justin. Our opponent from American Samoa, Rebecca Tehaka. Pretty good focus in the eyes of Tehaka. I'm excited for this matchup. I am too. We are looking at the hottest free agent in AEW right now. Absolutely. There have been many, like Matt Hardy's been one. Vicky Guerrero's been another. They want to be part of her career to help her out. They know that for all the athletic ability that she has, that she is in the formative years of her professional wrestling career. Just imagine how great she's gonna be in, in just two years in the sport. Well, that's why she's been recruited so high by every manager, every faction in AEW. You know, there's a saying in wrestling, when you can look at somebody, you look at them and you know their money. Well, that was impressive. Picked her up for a crucifix fall away slam. But then, again, you talk about how Jade is, is New, you know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Brand but, new. But you look at her and you know she's got star power, and that's why everybody's so hungry to get her on their side. And she's smart enough to know what she's worth, you know. And she's she's cutting her own path. So you got to respect that. Try to pump kick that time did to Haka, born and raised in America, Samoa. Great patience by Jade right there. She didn't rush. That's the thing that a lot of younger wrestlers and competitors do in their career. They rush too much. You know, Jade has got such poise and confidence already, and she's using that to her advantage. I am excited to see where she's going to be in a few years. Counting her own abs here, too. Look at this pickup. I can do that. One. The Jaded. One, two, three. Wow, that quickly. The winner of this match, Jade Cargill. So impressive. Calls that move, Jaded. And she gets the win here on Elevation. Here's her again, boom, face first. Another win for Jade Cargill, undefeated. Unblemished record. Hold on, hold on, hold on a second. Hold on a second. Sorry this? for interrupting your theme song. It's a great theme song. I love the beats. I am Mark Sterling Esquire, the most famous professional wrestling lawyer. And if I could just get a minute of your time, just a, a minute, free advice, pro bono, everyone loves free advice. I represented MJF, and I made sure that he is the highest paid athlete in AEW, okay? And I think I can do the same thing for you, yes. There now you this, go. you have a family to think about, okay? This isn't just the professional wrestling business. This is the business business. And I love this show, I love it. I watch it all the time. It's one of my favorite shows. But there is more money on Dynamite, okay? Okay, the number one show on TV, by the way, I just found out. So, if we could just chat in the back 30 minutes of your time, okay? That's all I need. Well, he's already a lion sack. He said just a minute, now he's asking for 30 minutes. You know they charge by the hour, right, Tony? Oh uh, boy, he's probably gonna charge for this time too. So Mark Sterling has come out to throw his name in the hat as the old cliche would go for the services to be able to help out Jade Cargill. Things looking real good here, Butch. You're getting the job done. Keep it up, huh?
kidding me? Why can't I get in? Hey, you know the rules. Go get yourself a jacket. The Dark Order. No Are you ready to play? I'm ready to win. Next on Elevation in tag team action, it'll be Mark Quinn of Private Party teaming up with the one and only Matt Hardy. Oh my God, is that Private Party? <laughs> yeah, let's go. This contest is a tag team bout set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Approaching the ring at a combined weight of 392 pounds, the team of Mark Quinn and Matt Hardy. Does Mark Quinn know he's wrestling? I don't know, I was just thinking that, Tony. I was like, this, did Mark Quinn like lose his gear at the airport or something? Well, you know, that's the height of arrogance if you say I'm going to wrestle you in my street clothes, isn't it? That's the height of arrogance or a psychological insult, one of the two. And they're both a combined weight of 388 pounds, Dylan McQueen and Dean Alexander. Dylan McQueen, Dean Alexander, two graduates of the Nightmare Family Wrestling School in Norcross, Georgia. Dylan McQueen, you know, the last time I saw him, he took that vicious shot from QT Marshall. Yeah. Tough young man, but he came out there representing the Nightmare Factory. Showed a lot of guts. And Mark Quinn is going to go in the old street clothes here against Dylan McQueen. It was a, it was a violent match. It really was. You talked about that against... <laughs> it's okay. He is willing, Dylan McQueen, to take on Matt Hardy here. Well, yeah, Dylan McQueen doesn't have any fear. He's not intimidated by anyone. I mean, you know, now he's in the ring with a veteran like Matt Hardy. Oh, from behind. There you go. The Hardy family office working in tandem here. And a pickup by Hardy. Oh, what a great veteran, man. I tell you, he's all about the money. And you know what? I get that. I really do. But God, Matt Hardy can still go. Yes, he can go. And he's got all that knowledge and experience, and he applies every tactic. Yep. He's like a strategical war engineer. He uses every tactic available. And Mark Quinn with a splash from the outside in. In street clothes. In street clothes on McQueen and just throws a boot in the way of Dean Alexander here. Look at this, man, just showing him up, intimidation, kicking him in the head. Mark Quinn, Matt Hardy together. Of course, you see on the outside, Isaiah Casney. What he's done, look at this. Well, that's the thing about Dylan McQueen that oh. I saw. Oh, nice high drop kick. This thing I saw about Dylan McQueen, he's got a lot of fire. You know, he's got a temper on him. You got two watches. All right, good. Well, and you know, I, and I bet you still can't tell time. And, and you know what? That's a, that's too much money. That's <laughs> too damn much money. Two watches on, and that's all because of the influence of the Hardy family office. He has shown them the dollar signs. He is. He's corrupting them to the almighty dollar. There you go. Watches. Yeah, we two got watches. that. Yeah, we got you got two watches, chains, sunglasses. Let's check in with Mark Quinn or with Isaiah, see how many watches he's got on. And oh, back elbow. Good fight from Dylan yeah, McQueen. McQueen trying to fight out of that corner, but Matt Hardy is vicious, man. 
Oh, yeah, he's definitely got a mean streak on him. Sends him into the ropes. Hardy, sleeper hold applied here. Not only threshing McQueen back and forth in that sleeper hold, McQueen with a jawbreaker to get out of it. Yeah, that was a desperation move right there. You saw how Red McQueen was getting in the face. Right. He was losing oxygen on that one. So close to making a tag. Pulled away by Mark Quinn. And there's a tag. Here comes Dean Alexander. Fist oh fire here from Alexander. Mark Quinn shoves him off to try to open him up for a lariat, but it was, oh my God, it was Matt Hardy with a blow from behind and then that spinning into Gurry kick and a two count. And that was a great anticipation by Matt Hardy. Knew the referee wasn't looking, gave the shot from behind, stunned the opponent, give his teammate all the advantage he could. Matt Hardy, that tactical assassin. Double team here, he and Mark Quinn standing in. Matt Hardy using himself as a launch pad. We've seen that for years. Yes, sir, for Mark Quinn, and down goes Alexander. There you see over there with him is McQueen. Or, oh, my God. I don't. I guess Dylan was over there to help his opponent back to the corner. And he paid for it. He's got Louis Vuittons on, too, by the way. Just so you know. <laughs> In guess. the midsection, double underhook. The leech. That's a submission hold, the leech. He's got it on. And Alexander taps out. The winners of this match, the team of Mark Quinn and Matt Hardy. Well, they, they, Paul, they say sometimes your winning hold is kind of who you are. I was going to say, I don't know which was more descriptive, the actual submission hole or the one applying the submission hole. <laughs> which one was the leech? They're both the leech. Another win, yet another win for the Hardy family office. So you would call that leech squared? That's what you would do. At Hardy, Mark Quinn, Isaiah Cassidy. Singles competition, Dr. Britt Baker, DMD with a Reba, a, a Rebel, a Reba against Rachel Rose. That's coming up next. is scheduled for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Making her way to the ring from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, Dr. Rick Baker, DMD. There you go, Tony, there's your favorite. She is going to have a shot at the AEW world title. One of the most anticipated matches ever in AEW women's wrestling, maybe the most anticipated. In wrestling history. She's got her shot coming up at Double Her opponent from Friendswood, Texas, Rachel Rose. And Rachel Rose on a year and a half in the, oh wow, a year and a half in the sport. Ready to go against the doctor. Wow. Whoa, man. what a match that's going to be against Ricardo Shida. And I, you know, I got to give, and I know I, I play favorites. She's a friend of mine, but you got to give her credit. She worked her way up the ladder to get back she to number did. one, didn't she? You can't talk trash about somebody that says, okay, you want me to go by the rules and I'll go by the rules. I'll work myself from the bottom to the top. Right. Now I am the number one contender and I've earned it. And everybody else can just be quiet about it. Sure. Side headlock on Rachel Rose. Rachel, who's been on the independent circuit, as a matter of fact, was a team of Thunder, uh, teammate of Thunder Roses, that is, on the Texas independent circuit. She also spent some time with one of my very good friends, Booker T, went to his wrestling school. There you go. And that, how about that head scissors by return that time by the doctor? Well, I mean, oh, the doctor's man. got so much experience. There she just slapped that thigh that, to that, crank that headlock I in. Know, just vicious she can be. Nice and, bridge up. Yeah, nice bridge up by Rose. On the little royal wave. Wow. How about that? Trying to get under the doctor's skin. Good hooker that time. Oh! Hooked her and threw her into the ropes. 
just pulled her hair right out of the back of her head. That's uh, that's using everything to your advantage, and the doctor definitely knows how to do that. Wow. Well, the doctor coming out with some new moves here. I don't. You, I would think in the as we head towards a double or nothing on May 30th, you shouldn't show all your arsenal here. I don't think she's showing all of her arsenal per se, but I think per se, but I think she's putting that arsenal that she's adapted to her game. She's putting in context and applying it now. Cover one, two, three. Wow, the doctor got that done quick, fast, and wow. in a hurry. No winner of this match. Dr. Britt Baker, D M D. Here in 2021, Dr. Britt Baker is now 10 and 1, the number one ranked contender. The curb stomp was the winner, and she's still pushing up. That's vicious, man. That is just vicious. Well, she's vicious, and there's your friend Reba and Rebel with a crutches clutch. Look at that curb stomp. Just drives the forehead right in the mat. We saw two things tonight that we're not used to seeing Britt Baker do. So she's putting those in her repertoire, I guarantee you, for her title match against Sheeta. It's coming up May 30th at Double or Nothing, her shot at becoming the world champ. What is your favorite sound? Like when you break someone's like face with a punch, like when you hit someone in the nose and you hear their septum like crack on your knuckle, or when you hit someone to a body shot and you feel their rib break beneath your hands and you hear and go, <laughs> it's the best, the best noise in the world. Moving on. Our next match on Elevation, singles competition in the women's division as Ty Conte meets Maddie Rinkowski. This contest is set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Approaching the ring from Calabasas, California, Maddie. Renkowski. Boy, Tony, this young lady's been on one heck of an emotional roller coaster between her conflict and her grudge match last week on elevation against Nyla Rose, which she lost. Now she's stepping in with Ty Conte, one of AEW's best. And her opponent from Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. Ty Conte. See that respect foul? Yeah. Did you say, Tony? I would think that's what it is. Ty Conte, 10 and 3, singles competitor, 10 and 3 in AEW. And, and really, you know, I mean, she's, listen, she's got a beautiful smile. She's a beautiful young lady, but she is as tough as they come in the ring. Maddie Rinkowski has had a number of big wins here in AEW. The native of California talked about her problems recently with Nyla Rose. Look at the quickness, man. You try to slug it out with Ty Conti? Probably not a good idea. Not a good idea. She took her down by trapping that knee and using that knee for leverage as she had the ankle held. You know, Ty Conti got a black belt in judo and a blue belt in Brazilian jiu-jitsu. Yeah, absolutely. And also, she's an accomplished freestyle wrestler, so definitely Ty Conti is an experienced veteran in the game of fisticuffs. Yeah, of fist, the game of fisticuffs. Maddie Rinkowski just threw up a fisticuff that time, and Ty Conti over. Floats over, got, a knot. got the arm, almost got into an arm bar that time. Good That's job by was, Maddie Rinkowski yeah, with that ankle one, trip. Maddie has shown a lot of fire and a lot of determination. Of course, when you go up against Nyla Rose, you have Vicky Guerrero to contend with as well. That's another story. But Rinkowski, the great athlete, the California native, he's got, or she's got uh, Ty in, in trouble here. Definitely in trouble. That big high scissor kick across the back of the shoulders. Interesting way, get in the ring. There's a nice elbow drop. One, got a one count that time. Rinkowski was right back to it, I love it. I love the aggressiveness. She yes, gets sir. it, stay on top of your opponent. Keep applying pressure with strikes or submissions. A couple of back elbows here by Conti and uh, Rinkowski just holds on, throws the knee up into the midsection. Now shoots her into the corner. Oh, out of the corner with fire and another one comes Ty Conti. 
Ty Conte follows all the way through on that lariat too. And there's that judo throw right there. Just using that arm. Where the elbow goes, the rest of you is gonna go too. Using what she knows. Release German suplex that time. Had that arm of Rinkowski hooked underneath. It's great to see the athletes apply their experience in other sports. I agree. You know, use that base, rely on your strength. Big yeah. running high boot to the side of the face. Poor Matty Rankowski felt that one. Yeah. It, it kind of reminds me of, of the great Rick Steiner. Right. How he used to use that amateur wrestling style and used to just make people submit. <laughs> oh, yeah. Make people cry. He would. You know? I he mean, that's what he knew, right? And yeah, he used that's it. what he knew, and he enjoyed that's doing right. it. Look at that. Oh, my goodness. That is terrible for the lower back. That is painful. That just crushes the disc the wrong way. Matty Rankowski, I guarantee you right now, is in a lot of pain from that one. She counters oh. out of it. Yep, there you go. Use the momentum of the other of your opponent against her, and that's what she did that time. Yeah, she's running on adrenaline right now. Here's a, a one, two, got a two count that time. And here's that move again, Paul. Look wow. at that back bend. Watch this, Tony. Oh, wow. That is lower disc trauma. I bet her legs are numb right now from that spinal cord being pinched. Maddie's in a good bit of pain, but it shows her competitive drive right now to stay in this fight. Ty picks her up. Big pump kick that time. Conti has got her hook. Oh, they tie KO. One, two, three. Now we know this match. Ty Conti. Incredible athlete, incredible performer. You never know it. A face that pretty is dangerous. Here it is, the DD tie. Boom! Great effort by Maddie Rankowski, though. You know, as much pain as she's in, she still brought a heck of a fight to Ty Conti. Ty Conti gets another win. Now goes to 11 and 3 in only four years of experience in wrestling. Thunder Rosa victorious again here tonight in AEW Dark Elevation, but in a different fashion than normal. Tell us about this new finishing move. Well, it is called the Peruvian choke, but I call it the Peruvian calavera choke. You know, I got to put a little spice in there. Um, as you know, I've been stepping my game in MMA, and in the last couple of weeks, I've been learning new stuff and, you know, adding more stuff to my arsenal. And, you know, whoever's going to step in the ring, they got to be ready because I can get them with a power move or with a submission, or with any strikes, you know, I'm hybrid. It's this type of technical skill that has helped you become number two in AEW's women's division, but Dr. Britt Baker ranked number one. She is getting that AEW women's world title shot against Hikaru Shida coming up at double or nothing, despite the fact that you beat her in the first lights out women's match in AEW. Your thoughts on this situation? Well, as everybody knows, because you know Twitter goes crazy every time it comes up, it was an unsanctioned match, and although I won and we made a huge difference in the women's division and in the world, um, well, you know, I have to say, Britt Baker, congratulations. I mean, as much as I hate it, you earned the spot. You know, you've been beating everybody that has been on your right, except me, of course. But let me make it very clear that whoever wins this match on double or nothing is going to have to face me. And once more, I'm going to show absolutely everybody why I'm la mera mera in AEW or in any ring I step in. And Thunder Rosa, the AEW Women's Championship, not the only title that you have your eyes on. One that you once held is now owned by Serena Deeb, the NWA Women's World title. Yeah, and it's been, it's been what a, quite a roller coaster of emotions with that title. I can tell you, I cannot wait to get my hands again on the NWA Women's Championship. But I know she needs to take care of business somewhere else first before she comes back to me. And I will be a double champion. Just imagine that, a double champion. Man, I cannot wait. But Serena, I'm waiting here. I've been waiting for you for months. And this time I'm more than ready for you or anybody else that is gonna step in front of me. Justin Roberts, back to you in the ring. One falls with a 20 minute time limit. Approaching a ring at a combined weight of 430 pounds. Luther. Oh. Sir 
Pentacle Chaos Project. Wow. Anybody needs a straight jacket, it's Luther. <laughs> That's a great line. He does look like, if he doesn't need a straight jacket, he looks like he's been in one a few times. That's right. He is just an unorthodox, odd. And he and Serpentigo Chaos Project together. As we send it back to the one and only Justin Roberts. And their opponents at a combined weight of 280 pounds, Marco Stunt, Jungle Boy, Jurassic Express. There they are. These guys look like so much fun to hang out with. Jungle Boy and Marco Stunt. Hey, you know what? I, I, I can't lie. I got to be honest with you. I like all the kids here. I really do, man. I have a lot of respect for them. I appreciate their their determination. I, I love being a part of their formative years, but man, Jungle Boy, one of my favorites. Oh, yeah, that's funny. I always tease Jungle Boy. Even as young as he is, I call him Grizzle. Yeah, man. I think he's got more matches than anyone else in AEW right now. Yeah, what a great kid. Just absolute great kid. And yeah. So happy to be able to call his matches here. And kid who's only been wrestling for five years. Marcos Tunt's only been wrestling for four years. A lot of experience on the other end. So great, uh, great contrast of styles and of teams here as Jurassic Express will take on Chaos Project and Luther. How do you approach a man like Luther? And that's probably what Jungle Boy is thinking right now. Luther? Um, I don't know, probably with a hazmat suit. <laughs> now there's Luther's not the kind of guy that I would want to invite over to a family pit. No, not, not at all. Jungle Boy, Marco Stunt, absolutely. Luther, not so much. Uh, Luther just kind of uh, slowly walked around in a circle there so he could find an opening and found it. And now he's on the attack with a big side headlock on Jungle Boy. Tag, I think, has been made. A blind tag here by Marco. It was. And Marco, look at that. Step up into Curry. Knocked his block off. Serpenta goes in. Down he goes with a drop kick. Look at the team of Jurassic Express here. And Serpentigo rolled away. You know, we talked so much. We've seen Chaos Project so many matches in dark and here. And they, Luther likes to use Serpentigo as a battering ram. And that's kind of like what Jungle Boy is using Marco there as. I was going to say at the beginning of this match, I said, well, the difference in the strides is, is Luther uses his partner as a weapon, where Jungle Boy works with his partner. <laughs> and I'm glad I didn't say that, because <laughs> I would have been contradicted. That's right, because he used his partner that time. Big shoulder block by Serpentico. It's never a good call for poor Marco Stunt to try to get in a contest of constitution and weight, you know? He sticks to the high flying. Direct contact isn't a good, look, that's what Marco Stunt needs to use. Right. Use that size and athleticism and speed. Keep his opponent guessing. Attack from all angles. Nice head scissor, nice kip up. I love the going between the legs, and grabbing the arm as you go through to send your opponent down. What great improvis improvisation by Marco Stunt. It's a move I always wanted to try, Tony. Stunt. I bet you did. Stunt as Serpentico moves out of the way. Marco just lightning quick and fearless as well. As we've seen, wow. Fearless. That's a great way to describe it. Fearless. He's going to try a penny combination here. One, two. Serpentico's out in two that time. One of our feature events here this week on Elevation as we head towards another big dynamite coming up on a Wednesday night live on TNT. And a pickup. Reverse atomic drop, step up in Zaguri, roll over one, two, and a penny combination. Jungle Boy got a two count out of that. So many big matches coming up. The IWGP US title will be defended. The world tag team title will be defended. The TNT Championship, Darby Allen, if he can even get in the ring against Miro. But that, here's a pickup. Oh, <laughs> using your opponent or using your partner again as a battering ram. Well, they're definitely taking a page out of Chaos Project's book. Yeah, they really are. Oh, that was a big slam. Yeah, sit out powerbomb type maneuver that time by Serpentico. Right now, as wobbly as you can see, obviously. 
I wonder if Serpentico walks around constantly in that state of wobbly. Yeah. You know, the way Luther, Luther uses him as a battering ram. Luther just too big and strong here, man. Yeah, definitely size advantage yeah. for Marco Stunt. Went in with reckless abandon. Marco Stunt ruled out of the way. Got a drop kick. Luger, or Luther, that is, just kind of uh, swatted it off. He'll try it again. No, oh, this is not a good place, Marco. No, Luther's got him up. Look at this. Running buckle bomb that time from Luther. Oh, it always just takes the wind out of my sails when I yeah. see Marco Stunt get thrown in the turnbuckle like that. All right, tags in Serpentigo. Watch out, here we go, the battering ram. Poor Serpentico. Yeah, no, just, okay, just throw me anywhere, please. Oh, Serpentico. Good job. Nicely done. And all the bulk of Luther across Marco Stunt for the cover and a two. When I look at the tag team of Serpentico and, and, and Luther, I always think Serpentico put an ad in the newspaper for a roommate and Luther showed up. <laughs> Could have been. Uh, the guy that eats all your food, the guy that, you know, goes through your closet, takes your clothes, that guy. And maybe that's not fair to Luther. He's probably an amazing, considerate gentleman. But the way he uses Serpentico, I doubt it. Hard. Great front power drop like that. One, two, nope. Two counts as referee Rick Knox says. Jungle Boy also looks out. Uh, Marco, who Marco spends a lot of trouble here right yeah, now. Yeah, he really, you know, we talked about being fearless. He is, but right now he's, he's he, in trouble. He's fearlessly in trouble. Yes, he is. Ah, just vicious body slam from Big Luther. And now Serpentico. Here we go. Use me, please. <laughs> Pick up a slam. Serpentico took the worst of that, Paul. He always does. Oh, look at that. The drop toe. I don't understand this unorthodox oh. style, but it seems to work for yeah. these guys. What'd he say? We got a one count. I don't know, but uh, it, it was a shriek. It was a shriek. He didn't really say anything, he was just shrieking. But Marco, man, Marco, boy, can I say this? Desperately needs a tag. Come Absolutely. on, get over there. Marco Stunt right now is in no man's land. He's deep in enemy territory. Get away, Marco, make a tag. All right. Luther on the doing, floor. That, doing that veteran meanness. Yeah, and getting the attention of the referee. So Serpentico on the other end could send Marco into the, the safety rail. rail. Serpentico goes in, elevated that time. Out into the crowd here, and now Marco trying to get back into the ring, and he gets back with that great move. That's a hangman. A hangman. But man, and Luther, then there's a big boot to the chops. He's relentless, buddy. Sending Marco in, ducks over. Marco trying a sunset flip, maybe. Oh, a little hair Get pulled up. up by the hair. Uh, the hair's got him picked up. Over the top, belly to belly suplex from Luther. One, two. We're not going to pin the guy that way. Didn't even have the shoulders crossed. Yeah, but I think Luther's taking advantage of the fact that poor Marco Stun has been on a road to hell right yeah. now, getting the snot beat out of him. All right, Luther said, I think he's it up. I think so. That was very high pitched. Okay. Marco cannot even get out of the way. No, he got out of the way that time. Good move, Marco. And Luther right there to kick him again. Boy, Luther one step ahead here. Yeah, definitely pushing that referee count to its fullest. Marco ducks. Marco lunges and makes a tag. And here comes Jungle Boy. And business just picked up. Yes, sir. Down goes Serpentico. Down goes Luther. Jungle Boy forearm. Knife edge chops. Repeated forearm combination. Here comes Luther from behind. And there goes Jungle Boy in the roughs. Now Luther goes down. Got him hooked again. Pick up. Rolled up one, two. And Serpentico almost stole that win. But Jungle Boy puts him down with authority. No, and Luther disrupted the three count. What is he shrieking? I don't know. Oh, my God. He power bombed him. Collapsed him on the ground or on the floor. Again, another kick that time from Marco. Marco's going to go outside. Still Jungle Boy, the legal man, and he sends Luther down. Luther 
Here's Serpentigo. Might get the win here if he can connect. And he does. A swanton dive. One, two. No. So close for Serpentico. It's nice to see Serpentico getting the work done kind of on his own without being used like a weapon. Jungle Boys had so many great matches. A draw with Chris Jericho when Jericho was the world champion. That happened on Dynamite. Took Darby Allen to the limit in a great match for the TNT title. And now in this tag match, he will bring Marco back in. Jurassic Express trying to win this thing. Marco is up over the top. Sends him down. Marco's got the cover. One, two, three. And Jurassic Express wins it. Good win for Jurassic Express, just like one of their big wins over FTR. The winners of this match, Jurassic Express. Poor Marco Stein. That guy um, needs an ice tub, a bathtub full of ice. Yes, and probably two margaritas. For Jungle Boy, win number 43 in his AW, AEW career. Boom. That move right there, I was trying to get out, Tony. That's a signature move that they got in on FTR to beat FTR. Great team. Jurassic Express gets the win here on Elevation. Another win and another day I come to work and spend more time lacing up my boots than I do in the actual wrestling ring. <laughs> but that's okay. That's okay because you heard the big epic announcement on Dynamite. Did you hear the crowd reaction? So loud. The world finally gets to sink their teeth in the most anticipated match in all of women's wrestling. The doctor gets her title shot. <laughs> I hope you're ready, champ, because I sure am. Sheeta later. <laughs> Yours truly, Dr. Britt Baker, D-M-D. The problems between the Hardy family office and Dark Order continue as one-on-one -on -one competition. Isaiah Cassidy goes up against Alex Reynolds. Oh my God, is that private party? This battle is set for one fall with a 20-minute time limit. Approaching the ring from Brooklyn, New York, weighing 182 pounds, Isaiah Cassidy. Isaiah Cassidy's always telling us what time it is. Yeah, buddy. Got two watches, by the way. He told us relentlessly earlier in this broadcast. And now he is going to, in his street clothes, I would guess. I wonder if this is some kind of like, you know, Matt Hardy training to look your best, dress your best, to compete your best. That could be that, Paul. I, with Matt Hardy, you never know. But this could be a great matchup because of the sides involved. And his opponent. From Long Island, New York, weighing 196 pounds, Alex Reynolds. Alex Reynolds of the Dark Order. The Dark Order. Along with the members of the Dark Order out with him. Well chronicled the problems with the Hardy family office in the Dark Order, and certainly some problems that we have seen between Alex Reynolds and Isaiah Cassidy. Now, who's going to stay here? They, they got to, they, okay. I was going to say, usually the Dark Order leaves, but since Matt Hardy and Mark Quinn are staying, the Dark Order is going to have two stay behind, that being John Silver and Colt Cabana. Well, John Silver and Alex Reynolds, of course, they came up together in my interview special where I got to talk to both of those gentlemen. So there, I definitely expected John Silver to stay out there in Alex Reynolds' corner. So here we go. Anticipated matchup, one of our feature matches this week here on Elevation. Reynolds moves him back, and there you see Bryce Rimsburg trying to break him, and Isaiah, of course, trying to get the cheap shot in. Here comes Alex firing back. 
You got a crisp, clean shots that Alex Reynolds is throwing in there on Isaiah. Oh! Nice back elbow. I think right now Isaiah's wishing that he had a pair of wrestling boots on instead of his fancy shoes. Hooks him with a great vertical snap suplex and a cover. A lot got of, a two count out of that, man. Yeah, a lot of torque Alex Reynolds put into that snap suplex where he popped those hips and snuck Isaiah Cassidy right over. You know, the thing about it is, is that private party, they've always been very fashionable in their wrestling yeah, There's time. a time and place for fashion. I'm not agreeing with this. To me, as a wrestler, if I was competing in the ring and a guy showed up in street clothes, I'd really take exception to wow. it. Drop to hold on to the middle rope that time. First thing I do is rip that shirt off and slap his lungs out. Mm, well, that's just me, but I'm old and grumpy. I, I just got that visual and <laughs> flash before my eyes on that one. Up on top, here comes Alex Reynolds, cross body. Good pinning combination, move two count only. What I was saying is that their wrestling attire had always been fashionable before that, been very flashy. Right. I kind of like it. And now, I, I, I just. I'm I, not feeling this vibe, you know. Well, I'm I really just think not. they're trying to show up their opponent. We can I, come out in our street clothes and beat you, right? I, mean, I guess maybe that is a psychological warfare right. tactic by Matt Hardy, but, uh, you know, sometimes you can irritate opponent to, to your detriment, not right. your benefit. Oh, look at that. Again, it's Bryce Rensburg trying to enforce the rules here. Oh, my goodness. Hardy. And that's all by great coaching and great planning right oh. there. Isaiah Cassidy knew that Matt Hardy was there. Push Alex Reynolds to the floor, pull the referee, draw the referee away, create some conflict, a conversation with the referee, and then let your sharks on the outside do their work. And now Alex Reynolds is in a lot of trouble. The momentum shift that fast. Absolutely. And here goes a Cassie once again, just working on that small of the back that Matt Hardy started. And here he goes. Going outside, back in. Covers him up. One, two. And a two count. Showing that great athleticism. Right now is not the time to pause to think about where you left the keys of the car. Right now is a focus on Alex Reynolds. Oh, big forearm shot out of the corner. Yeah. Reynolds comes out fighting. This is a great contest between oh, Isaiah yeah. Cassidy and Alex Reynolds. Well, we anticipated this because these are two fine young athletes going out of here. Isaiah now trying to uh, regroup in the other corner here. And actually, so is Alex Reynolds. Well, that's Look. a veteran smartness on Alex Reynolds' point, just to take the time wait for Isaiah Cassidy who's younger to make that mistake but again the athletic resilience of Isaiah Cassidy just paid off yeah and now he goes on the floor to get his adversary there you see members of the dark order in the background Pick oh my god there you go again the lower back this time across the guardrail that's where you see Matt Hardy with his expertise coming in he targeted Alex Reynolds back, and now the rest of his war dogs are following his students. His clients are all following the same path, attacking that lower back of Alex Reynolds. Well said, his clients, that's what they are. And, and Reynolds just trying to hoist himself up here. And, and Cassidy just waiting on him, look at that. Alex Reynolds barely beat that 10 count back in the ring. One, uh, he rolled it over, one, two, he got, no, he got a two. I love that grit. I do too, man. You can just feel that angry grit on Alex Reynolds right there. He wanted to turn that cover to an advantage. Well, story passed between these two. They've met before. And it was a big leg drop by Isaiah Cassidy that put Alex Reynolds out for a while. He had to go through concussion protocol to get back in. Yeah, and that kind of stuff you don't forget when no, a guy does that exactly. to you. Exactly. It becomes personal every time you step in the ring against him. Throws him now to the turnbuckle pad once again. Got to love the determination of Isaiah Cassidy, the, the, the smartness to continue to attack the back of Alex Reynolds. Turnbuckle, guardrails, ring apron, Absolutely. knee to the back. That's a great philosophy. And you see how Matt Hardy has had such a great influence on these young men and their competition ability in the ring. Maybe not so much in their 
general attitude. Sure. But their in-ring competition wow. has gotten better. Nice full lariat by Alex Reynolds. Isaiah's in some trouble here, and Reynolds trying to take advantage of it. Nope, held his ground, sends him in, goes in. Reynolds moves out of the way. Here comes Reynolds with a running elbow shot. Here he comes again. And a flying elbow strike that time. And a drop kick, Alex Reynolds. Was, oh, he tried to get yeah. a little creative. That back, he's still feeling it. All right. That's not a good pain. That was a really sharp pain Alex Reynolds just felt. But he fights on here, Paul, and he's got Isaiah Cassidy in trouble. Lifts him over the top, covers him, hooks the leg, and gets only a two. Close. That's good for Alex Reynolds. Don't get too discouraged now, Alex. No, he's got to keep moving. Keep that adrenaline pumping, Alex. Keep on the attack. Yeah, I know the back. And he's in pain right yeah, now. Man, you can, can see it. That's right. Can't he's pressing stand both up. hands on the knee to stand up. Right. Those erector muscles in the back aren't working. Makes it hard to stand up. Let's see if he can pick him up. Can't do it. Yeah. Go try to pick him up. Maybe try to Death Valley Driver. Maybe. Hey, here, got him he's up trying. now. Let's see what he's going to do. Isaiah fights his way off again. And Cassidy with a step up kick in the back of the head. And a sling blade type maneuver over the back. Covers him one, two, th no. Wow. Cassidy is so determined to attack Alex Reynolds' back. Every opportunity he can counter, attack the back, attack the back, attack the back. Really smart strategy. Oh, yeah. This is some of the smartest. Strategy wrestling I've seen from Isaiah Cassidy yet on elevation. Cassidy's gonna go up top. Now wait a second here. This high risk, high reward. Well, if he tries to drop the list, is, he was up top when he injured Alex Reynolds earlier with a leg drop. Oh, he missed this time. He was to, gonna try to. He's gonna try to put him in the, concussion protocol again. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, it's personal. But Alex moved out of the way. Alex Reynolds is hurting so bad right now. It's hard for him to move. Rolls him up, one, two, new, not yet. He's gonna try to crush the skull again, and there goes Matt Hardy. A trip up on the other end, inside cradle, two, and no. This match goes on. I'm glad Alex Reynolds was able to kick out of that. Wow, that pump kick, flush in the face at time of Reynolds. Wait a minute now, this, this is why. This, yeah, okay, now here comes the dark order. Yep, get rid of Matt Hardy, thank you very much. But meanwhile, the belt is off. He ducked it. He rolls him up too, and he beat him. Alex. Good job, Alex Reynolds. No winner of this match. Oh, but wait a second. They—he's they, got the belt now. He, he is whipping Reynolds with it. Isaiah Cassidy comes in. He's got John Silver, who's been nursing an injury of his own—a shoulder injury. He's got him in a sleeper hold. They dispensed with. Colt Cabana, and now basically Alex Reynolds with that back injury that he suffered in this match is at the mercy here of the Hardy family office. They're making, they're making Silver watch this. Into the twist, oh, the leech. The he, leech. He's putting the leech on. Making him watch him put the leech on Alex Reynolds. What a maniac this Matt Hardy is. Nothing Reynolds can do. That's not. That's Matt Hardy at his best right there. Matt Hardy being devious, vicious, psychological warfare, torturing John Silver. Silver could not escape. Nothing that Reynolds could do. This is disgusting, but this is the Hardy family office. Meanwhile, the winner of the match, Alex Reynolds, in the midst of the leech, He'll pick up his 10th win, but the damage has been done here on Elevation. Well, fans, coming up on Wednesday, it's going to be John Moxley going up against Yuji Nagata for the IWGP US Championship. Let's take a look a little bit closer at that matchup coming up live on TNT. Got it.
Hassan. Mr. John Moxley, you are the one who is going to go to America. You didn't think I was going to hear what you said about me? You didn't think that message was going to get passed across the Pacific? You think it's just going to go right over my head? Uh-uh. Called me a little punk. A little punk. I came to you with respect. I wanted to give you a shot at the IWGP United States Championship. I invite you to Dynamite with respect. I wanted to share the ring with the great legend, Yuji Nagata. The great thing about this business is no matter how long you've been in it, even a legend like Yuji Nagata can always learn something. And Yuji Nagata will learn that your mouth can get you in trouble, especially when you're fixing a step in the ring with the baddest son bitch in this game, John Moxley, especially when a championship is on the line. I'm gonna kick a hole through your chest. I'm gonna squeeze your neck. Squeeze every ounce of oxygen you have left in your body. I'm gonna dump you on the top of your head. We've always wondered for a long time, when is Yuji Nagata finally just not gonna get back up again? Well, I'll tell you this, it's coming pretty soon. Once that bell rings, I got no respect for anyone. Me hate that. It's the radioactive Bobby back of Bobby you will be Puerto Rican at the This contest is set for a one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Approaching the ring from Brooklyn, New York, weighing 175 pounds, the radioactive Poppy, Danny Limelight. There's my guy, Tony. I love Danny Limelight. So much energy, so much passion. Well, he's going to need all the energy and passion in this matchup. One of our feature matches here this week on Elevation. I love this entrance, buddy. And his opponent from Cincinnati, Ohio, weighing 231 pounds. He is the IWGP United States Champion, Jim Moxley! That's a beautiful championship John Moxley's carrying that IWGP US title. Oh, that thing is pretty. Absolutely, and John Moxley and Yuji Nagata coming up on Wednesday night live on TNT for that IWGP US title belt. It'll be his fourth championship defense since winning the title from Lance Archer at Wrestle Kingdom 14 in 2020. So he's been at the title reign for 16 plus months. That's impressive. Yeah. That's a workhorse. That's why John Moxley's the man, the myth, and the man to be with. Boy, his legacy just keeps growing and growing. He's also, many fans realize this, it's worth repeating again, the longest reigning AEW World Champion, 277 days before he was hit in the head with a microphone, thanks to Kenny Omega. Uh, I don't even want to say the name. I know. Just puts a bad taste in your mouth, doesn't it? Don Callis. <laughs> right? Side headlock, John Moxley. If John Moxley got you in the side headlock, you can better believe it's stiff, but it's stiff. It, but, <laughs> but, but you can better believe it's also better than taking the blows and the hard punches that he can dish out. Oh, yeah, like John Moxley's like trying to wrestle a, a bag of cement blocks. You know, I yeah. mean, everything he does is with purpose and intent. Leg trip that time, <laughs> pick him up. Yeah. And plenty of attitude, and I tell you, the match against Yuji Nagata for that title is going to be something else. I haven't really seen new, uh, Yuji Nagata or called one of his matches since the 90s. So I look forward to that. Great veteran, great star in Japan, and it's going to be right here in AEW. All right now, John's got his work cut out for him with Danny Limelight, who is much different than Nagata. Quick, look at this. Floats over the top, and a drop kick by... 
Limelight. The radioactive poppy. Yeah. You're in the ring with John Moxley, Danny. I get the confidence, but stay on track, bud. Stay You're not, on track. I agree, Paul. Good call. Stay on track. And see that that just pissed him off. Yeah, and that was a good move to make. Yeah, he just he just John likes to fight, John likes to wrestle. He pre appreciates good competition, yeah. but you know, he's not afraid to humble somebody real quick if yeah. they get a little arrogant. Went to the full Nelson, there's a snap mare take. Oh boy. There yeah. we go. He starts pacing like a like a dog in a cage, you know. Like I knew he's, that. he's ready to go. I knew that dance was coming. Oh, you knew from that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. A pickup. It's a basic vertical suplex that time, but really, really well, well executed. And he got a one count. Good fight, Danny Limelight, you know. Former United States Marine Corps martial arts instructor. Yeah. Look at Moxley, just that's such an old school thing right there. That's yeah. just you know, I love it. I love it. It's a great education for Danny Limelight too to be in there with somebody like John Moxley, a champion of this caliber. <laughs> you know, who just imposes his will with ease. I thought it was gonna be like an STF, get a grapevine in the legs and pulling up, but it was like uh digging into the nostrils. I don't know what you call that move, but damn, it was effective. Uh, I think that's uh, Moxley's version of a sinus cleaner. Oh, there you go, the sinus cleaner. Right there that one down. There you go, write that one down, folks. You heard it ah. first. Yeah, that's the thing like Moxley, though. Sometimes he's like a big cat playing with his food. He, you know, that's the thing about John Moxley, too. He wrestles big, if that makes any sense. Some guys, they wrestle smaller than they are. Sure. John Moxley wrestles much bigger. I think he's one of the absolute toughest men I've ever had the pleasure of calling a man. Without a doubt, hands yeah. down. Four decades, I've known a lot of tough guys. I'd put John Moxley right there in the group. I agree, man. And Limelight caught him. Forearm shot. And there it goes. Just woke him up, and there's That's, one back. There you go. At Mo there, Mo Moxley wants a fight. He's going to get one against Eugene Nagata coming up Wednesday night for the title. But right now, he Get your just, hands up, kid. Yeah, paintbrushing Danny Limelight, who's dizzy, and down he goes with a running Larry at that time. Well, there's just something about Moxley. When he gets hit in the chin, he just changes gears and comes alive. It's unreal. You can have a nice uh, exhibition match, if you will, learn some wrestling, or you can hit John Moxley in the chin and get the snot beat out of you. Your choice. Moxley's been the U.S. champ now for over one year in IWGP, regaining the title from Lance Archer at the Tokyo Dome. Archer had defended it successfully in California against David Finley. There's a name for the past. So the legendary Fit Finley. So now it's Moxley and Yuji Nagata this Wednesday on Dynamite for the IWGP U.S. title. Up on top. Down goes Moxley. That was and, a little bit of a surprise. Danny Lyon, like yeah. digging deep for something different. Absolutely. And Moxley, look at that, just uh, rolling, instinctively rolling towards a corner to get out of the way that time, because that really, that stunned him. I think but, that actually rung his bell, and that's a statement for Danny Limelight. It is. He was able to ring John Moxley's bell. Wow, maybe not. He came out with force, big pump kick that time. And a spinning forearm shot or a fist, and that woke Moxley up, man. Whoa. He's guys, talking about big-time shots. I love it. Oh, he's I like him a lot. Yeah, hit him again. Oh, man. Notice how some of those blows, not only does he hit, he holds you to the back of your head. Oh, yeah, that just, so, there, there's, yeah. No, there's no way for your brain to go but bounce around in your skull. That's right. Tried a pump kick that time, and Limelight comes away with a kick to the, uh, to the hamstrings again. Three shots there, there's a forearm and a, a high knee lift. Good job, Danny Limelight. Over the top, Danny Limelight takes flight, twisting, falling right on John Moxley, but both men, as you can see, feeling the results of that. Danny Limelight with that huge high wrist twist dive. He knows he's in the ring with one of the world's best. He's gotta leave everything, everything in the ring. Limelight sees his moment, but he's hooked by John Moxley. Moxley throws him over the top for a German, but he lands on his feet. Good job, that's the athleticism of Danny Limelight. He's feeling it now, getting a little rhythm. And going up top, hits Moxley with a blockbuster. 
And to cover. One, two, no. You know, about, uh, about a year ago, really, Danny Limelight debuted in IWGP. So this type of match, nothing new for him. Danny's finding out who he is, and he knows he's got that well, that reserve, and good competition makes you better. And John Moxley right now is making Danny Limelight really show what he's all about. Uh-oh. Rear naked choke. That's one of his better moves, but Limelight got out of it. Back elbow. And up on top, Limelight. Wow, what? Are... He's just trying to drive that chi, right, that nin right into the chin. Great vertical. That was a heck of a Man. vertical leap. Yeah. yeah, it really was, buddy. Uh, whoa, my God, just. Uh, earlier, he grabbed the nostrils, and this time he's biting the bridge of the nose. And, oh, my God, a paradigm shift over the middle turnbuckle. That's got to be it. One, two, three. There's a new twist to that move. God, it's your winner. The IWGP United States Champion, John Moxley. Yeah, I gotta love it when that lunatic takes that move to the next level. Man, the paradigm shift from the middle turnbuckle. There's your IWGP US Champion, dead ahead, two days, Yuji Nagata for the title. And maybe soon he'll become the AEW World Champion once again. Wow, Danny Limelight's head just hit that mat and it was all over before it ever started. Be sure to tune in this Wednesday night on TNT where the IWGP US Champion John Moxley defends against Yuji Nagata, 8 o'clock Eastern Time, live on TNT. Wednesday on TNT. SCU challenges Young Bucks for the Tag Team Championship. The legendary Yuji Nagata comes to AEW to face John Moxley. And Darby Allen defends the TNT Championship against Miro. Darby Allen, I'm coming for you! Oh! AEW Wednesday Night Dynamite live at 8 on TNT.